Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, do consider liking, subscribing. I do like to make a video every week just talking about personal finance, investing, and really just trying to help you get better with handling your money. Um, so for today's video, we are actually gonna go over a really popular uh, investment strategy that you probably would have seen or heard about if you've looked into investing at all, and that's actually dollar cost averaging. Now in this day and age, a lot of people are really starting to realize how important um, investing is, especially millennials like myself not too long ago, and probably like myself not too long ago, before you even looked into investing, you probably saved your money in a bank, you know, savings bank accounts um, your whole life, so you might actually be sitting on some cash and you're now at a stage in life where you're wondering, you know, maybe it's time to actually, you know, start looking into investing some of that cash. But of course, how do you go about doing that, right? So, you know, what's the best strategy to do that? So for today's video, we're actually gonna go over a very popular strategy, one that a financial advisor would probably recommend to you if you went to them firsthand, um, and that's dollar cost averaging. I'm going to explain what exactly dollar cost averaging is, you know, some of the benefits that come along with dollar cost averaging, and then of course, I'll also explain some of the cons or some of the risks that come with dollar cost averaging. So with that being said, let's get into it. So if you go onto Google and Google what is dollar cost averaging, you're gonna see something along the lines of dollar cost averaging or DCA is an investment strategy in which an investor divides up the total amount to be invested across periodic purchases of a target asset in an effort to reduce the impact of volatility on the overall purchase. The purchases occur regardless of the asset's price and at regular intervals. In effect, this strategy removes much of the detailed work of attempting to time the market in order to make purchases of equities at the best prices. Dollar cost averaging is also known as the constant dollar plan. Well, that was pretty easy to understand, right? No point in making a video. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, to break it down in simple English, dollar cost averaging is simply taking that lump sum of money that you're going to invest into the market and instead of putting it all at once, dumping it onto the market all at once as one lump sum, what you're gonna do is you're actually going to break it up into smaller investments, um, into smaller amounts, and you're going to invest them into the market at um, periodically, right? Whether it be monthly or quarterly, you're just going to put it into the market at those set periods of time, regardless of the price, regardless of what the market is doing at that time, whether it's up 50%, down 50%, you're just gonna buy and stick to this strategy. Right, so for example, let's just say I had $100. And instead of putting the whole $100 into the market at the beginning of the year, what I actually decide to do is I'm gonna break that $100 up into $10 smaller investments. And then I'm going to put those $10 investments into the market individually every single month. So January, at the end of January, or the beginning of January, I'll put, a 10, I'll put $10 into it. And then February, and then, you know, keep going until obviously you've put the whole $100 into there. That essentially is what dollar cost averaging is. So you might ask, why would someone choose to go through all that trouble of you know splitting it up and going and buying it monthly instead of just putting your money in and be done with it? Well, the idea behind dollar cost averaging is that because you're buying in at those intervals, whether it be monthly or quarterly, um, you're trying to take advantage of the volatility of the market. So as you got, as you probably know, the market goes up and down, up and down. And basically, because you're buying in at different months, so one month you might be buying when the market is high, and then you know February it drops down a little bit. You buy in February, and then March you buy again in March, and you know when it goes up a little bit. But the whole idea behind dollar cost averaging is so that uh, by the end of it, you've actually averaged out lower, um, saving you you know lower your cost price because you've actually averaged out and taken advantage of those little dips in the market right so just to take that example a little bit further let's just say there's a, a stock price right there's a stock that's worth two dollars and you know let's let's go to our example of a hundred bucks right so my first ten dollar investment I go to buy it in January and it's at two dollars right and so I go I Obviously, I don't care about the price, so I'll just buy it. So that buys me five shares of that of that stock. And then in February, I come back and that stock's actually dropped down to a dollar. Right now, I'm still gonna buy, use my $10 to buy that stock. But now instead of getting five shares of that stock, I'm now gonna get 10 shares of that stock. Right, and then again, um, you know, let's let's just say we go into March, and you know, the price is at a dollar fifty. You ten dollars, you buy your ten dollars, and whatever. I can't do the math at this point. So whatever um, amount of shares you get for, you know, for uh, at a dollar fifty, at ten bucks, you know, that's what you get. But that's the idea behind dollar cost averaging. It's just taking advantage of those fluctuations, so that by the end of it, by the time you've put in, you know, if you fully deployed your capital, you've actually ended up buying in at a lower cost price, essentially. So what are some of the advantages of 
of DCA or dollar cost averaging, right? So number one, um, it obviously reduces your cost basis, um, much like the example where I just um, you know went over, whereby you're taking advantage of the fluctuations of the market, you know, like the uh, like our company X that we talked about before. So number two, um, the next advantage that dollar cost average averaging does offer is that it's going to reduce your risk, and it does this because basically what they're saying is it's reducing your risk because you're not fully exposing your you know your money or your capital to the market right you're gradually building up that exposure to the market so that you know instead of the idea or the thought um, thinking behind it is that you know and so what if you put in your hundred bucks today and then next week the market crashes you know that's all your money into the market you're, you're fully exposed to that and that you know obviously you're gonna see that hundred dollars go down right so instead of that happening because your dollar cost averaging into it you're not fully exposing you know all the your net worth to to the market right it's gradually building building up. So that's kind of the idea or the argument behind, you know, limiting the exposure and um, limiting your, your risk using dollar cost averaging. The third benefit that dollar cost averaging will offer is it does remove all emotion. And this is probably one of the ones that makes it quite popular in the finance industry, you know, with financial advisors just explaining it to their clients. The argument behind this is that dollar cost averaging removes all emotion from investing because it's such a robotic strategy, right? You don't have to think about it. It's mindlessly just putting money into the market regardless of the price regardless of whether it's up or down you're just gonna buy the same stock or the same index month in month out until you've got all your capital um, all invested into the market so it takes away that stress of you having to feel like you have to time the market it, it, you know it supposedly takes away that stress of you having to worry about you know what if I put in all my money now and then the market crashes you know in like a week or a month that's the type of mental discipline that um, dollar cost averaging brings to the table right because it's so robotic because the it doesn't require you to think basically it doesn't really require you to, to know much it's just that uh, you know on this date or on this day of the month you're just gonna put your ten dollars or however you know much you, you decide to put into the market you're just gonna buy it so you don't have to worry about you know the market going up or down you just have that peace of mind knowing that you you are putting your money in and at the end of it you know you're going to average out and your cost is gonna be lower and you don't fully expose all your money to the market but that's the third main advantage that dollar cost are averaging basically offers now the big question is before you, you know, it sounds all handy dandy, but you know, before you go and run in and put all your money into, to, you know, start dividing up your money and deciding how much you're going to invest every month or every quarter, you know, you got to know, does dollar cost averaging actually work? Yes and no. <laughs> Let me explain. Um, so even though dollar cost averaging on paper sounds like a very easy, um, which it is a very easy strategy to perform and it sounds all handy dandy, obviously a, a strategy this popular, you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna actually wanna see you know, results and proof. And studies have been done to sort of show exactly you know what the results of dollar cost averaging is so that we know if this, the thing actually works. So in a nutshell, if the goal is to maximize your wealth from your starting capital, Dollar cost averaging isn't exactly the best, isn't the best way to go. So let me explain. Multiple studies have already been done on dollar cost averaging, comparing the performance of, of dollar cost averaging or just you know dumping your money in all at once, which is also known as lump sum investing, right? So many studies have been done just comparing the two and seeing which strategy does actually come out on top, which one will yield better gains for you. The first study that we're gonna go over is a study that was actually done by Vanguard, which compares dollar cost averaging and lump sum investing. And basically to sum it up, the study compares um, you know how a portfolio that was you know dollar cost averaging and a portfolio that was lump sum investing over 10 year period. So for 10 year periods going back way back to 1926 all the way up to 2011 and what the study found quite consistently is that the lump sum investing method actually outperformed the dollar cost averaging strategy 67 percent of the time so basically two out of three times you would have been better off just putting your money into the market all at once and just leaving it there rather than dollar cost averaging another study that was done was by seeking alpha and their study simulates putting hundred and twenty thousand um, dollars into SPY or the S&P 500 all at once compared to you know splitting that um, 120k up into ten thousand um, dollar investments and putting it in over a 12 month period of time and so the study goes back to 1990 and what they did is they shifted the start week of the study by one week every time they ran a simulation so all in all they ran about 1300 different simulations um, comparing the two strategies and what they found um, basically in pure returns the dollar cost averaging strategy is a loser in their terms in the last 27 years a 12 month investment into 
the S&P 500 provided a return of 8.77% while using dollar cost averaging over the same period would have actually only returned 4.77%. What if you were given a $100,000 check, right, right in 2008, right before the financial crisis sort of blew up? Another study that was actually uh, done by Morningstar actually simulated what would have happened if you had put you know, a lump sum $100,000 into the market right before that crash in 2008 versus if you had you know, dribbled your money into, into the market, uh, dribbled $100,000 into the market. And basically, despite the, you know, the massive haircut taken to the investment in 2008, you can actually see on the graph right here that you know, lump sum investing clearly came out the winner at the end of that. It still yielded much higher returns than if you had dribbled your money into the market you know, over using the dollar cost averaging strategy. And what about right after a financial crisis? Let's just say in 2009, what if you, you know, came into some money in 2009, say you got, you know, got a hundred thousand dollar check in 2009. And what if you were someone that was obviously scared from the, you know, the, the financial crisis that just took place and it's, you know, worried about putting your money all into the market all at once, you decide to dollar cost average your money into the market over the next 12 months. So Morningstar also took this into account and they also simulated what would have happened, you know, what would your gains be? If if, you know you decided to do that in 2009 and as you can see from the results of the simulation that they did um, you can actually see that you know just putting your money into the market all at once as a lump sum you would have been far better off doing that than if you had decided to you know to dollar cost average uh, because you're a little bit worried about what the market might do so what's the reason behind the lacking performance of dollar cost averaging and it's actually quite simple um, if the market's return is expected to be positive um, delaying entry of you know part of your assets just means that you're actually giving up you know any gain that you could have gotten on that money that you decided to keep on the sideline so instead of your money all in there working for you all at once because you're only you know putting in little bits and pieces into the market that means that everything that you have in the sideline is literally doing nothing to, to contributing towards building your wealth basically the cash that you have sitting on the sideline um, not only is it doing nothing to, to help it might it's probably actually losing value because it's just sitting there doing nothing it's also not earning you anything um, and that's why you know over time with a longer time horizon lump sum investing actually ends up you know working out better for you in the long run how about the behavioral and emotional benefits of dollar cost averaging well there's actually a, a weakness to that too believe it or not because the argument goes that you know it removes all emotion because it's such a robotic and such a you know a process driven strategy that the decision to, to invest doesn't really require you to be doesn't really require any emotion or thinking so it's mindless and you're just kind of you know following going through with the actions right so you guys have to remember that dollar cost averaging for it to work a very important part of the of dollar cost averaging is also to buy the dips right so yes you'll be buying as the market goes up and it is a lot easier to buy as the market goes up for many people because it's obviously almost confirming that you're doing the right thing right you buy it and it goes up even further makes you feel good um, but then you also have to remember that you definitely have to buy the dips as well when the market starts going down that's a very important part of dollar cost averaging because that's what eventually averages out your your costs right it's because you're buying low and you're also buying high now what if you go in, you know, one of the months and you see that the market's down, say 20%, all right? You, you, you know, you buy it, that's fine. And then what if you go in the next month and it's now down 50%? Now, now things get a little bit scary, right? Now you're really wondering, um, should I really be buying into stocks right now? You know, and what if you see it go down 70%? And this is probably at a stage where literally no one has any, want anything to do with stocks. Everyone's selling out of their investments. Everyone's, you know, kind of running for the hills when it comes to stocks. You know, are you really going to be able to just kind of stick with that strategy and actually pull the trigger and buy into a market where there's just so much fear and so much uncertainty going around? You know, that's it's pretty tough, you know. Um, it's not easy buying into into a market like that. It's, it's very difficult to be that one, to, to go against the grain, to sort of go against what everyone else is telling you, right? And you know, what could happen and what is most likely going to happen to for most people is, you know, instead of buying that month, they might actually just wait a little bit. You know, you start pulling back on buying your stock. You start pulling back on deploying your, your money um, and actually just waiting it out a little bit until you're kind of certain that things are gonna come back, you know, turn back around. And then you're only just gonna be delaying, you know, your money and you're just gonna be sitting in cash even longer. They have shown that, you know, for a dollar cost averaging strategy, if you actually stretch it out instead of say a 12 month period to a 36 month period, instead of being outperformed, you know, 67% of the time, um, you know, lump sum investing actually then outperforms dollar cost averaging 90% of the time. 
So there is also that factor to, to kind of think about as well. Are you really going to mentally be able to overcome the fear that's going to be surrounding you, you know, when, and when a market is crashing, when everyone else is running from stocks? It's definitely something for you to consider and think about now before you decide whether dollar cost averaging is right for you. So to conclude, dollar cost averaging, is it a good strategy? Yes, it's a good strategy. It's just not what it's all cracked up to be. You know, just like every other, you know, investment thesis or investment strategy, it does have, it does come with its, you know, its flaws. And you should definitely know them before you decide whether it's right for you or not. You know, I mean, mathematically and, you know, based on historic data that they've gone over and the studies that they've done, it does show that over the long run, dollar cost averaging isn't the most effective way to, you know, invest your money. Because if the end goal is to really maximize the return that you can get back on your, in your investments, then dollar cost averaging might not be the, the right one for you, right? But then again, it really does depend on your own situation. You know, um, if you have a long time horizon, you know, if you can actually stick it out in the market for, you know, 30 plus years, then, you know, maybe just put your money in there all at once and then just write it out, just set it and forget it. But if you're someone that doesn't have a big lump sum of money, you know, if you don't have $20,000 to put in all at once, and if you're someone that, you know, can put aside, save some money aside every month, then yeah, by all means, just buy into the market, you know, every month, because at the end of the day, you know, it's better than just sitting in cash, right? For me, um, ideally, what I would do is I would actually go out and take the time and learn and teach myself how to invest, learn how to, to value the individual companies and, and learn the fundamentals of companies, maybe start by reading some books. I've got a great video, you know, just going with a really, easy books for you to start off on. Maybe while you're learning how to invest, you can obviously, you know, every month, you know, just put some money into the market because at the end of the day, it's, it's honestly, it's a lot better than just leaving it in your bank account. You know, and whether you, you, that you end up deciding to dollar cost average or just to put all your money up into the market, you will be better off. You're, you're certainly going to be better off than what you're going to end up with if you just leave it into your high interest um, savings account. But let me know down below, what, what do you guys think about dollar cost averaging? Are you using dollar cost averaging or, you know, are you just decided to, you know, the heck with it, just put all your money into the market at once, set it and forget it? Or even better, are you someone who's actually taken the time out, maybe learned, um, you know, a little bit about value investing, you know, learn a little bit about reading into company's fundamentals and investing in the fundamentals rather than chasing returns. Let's talk about that down below. Uh, I'd be really interested to know your thoughts. But other than that, guys, that's it for the video today. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. Please do like and subscribe to the channel. It does help us quite a bit. Just smash that like button. It's free. It only takes a second of your time, um, and, but it does really help me out. If you enjoyed this one, then I've got more. I'm gonna pop them up on the screen now. Click on them, subscribe, like, and I will definitely see you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. <laughs>